Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to today's session. Today, we are going to talk about exploring the Kubernetes ecosystem part two. So let's get started with this session. Before we get deeper into this topic, I would like to introduce myself. If you have not joined any of my sessions, I'm Garima Bajpai. I'm based out of Ottawa, Canada. I'm the founder for the DevOps community of practice here, which has several chapters, Ottawa, Toronto, Edmonton, Montreal, Atlantic provinces. If you're around those areas, I highly encourage you to join any of those chapters and get started with your DevOps learning with us and the community. I have written a book, uh, Strategizing Containers Delivery uh, in Cloud, which is out in August. If you're interested to know more about that topic, you can get hold of that book. Also, I've uh, been writing and contributing to several courses uh, like Observability Foundation, uh, Site Reliability Foundation, and I have also been nominated as DevOps Dozen 2022 Top Evangelist. Uh, so yeah, I think um, uh, today's topic, I'm very excited about uh, doing part two of this topic. I'm taking support uh, from a book called Mastering Kubernetes, fourth edition. This is a very, very interesting book. I highly recommend if you are new to Kubernetes, you want to get started with it. This is one of your key books for reading and you know for getting your learnings uh, uh, as we go along, right? So um, as I mentioned that I like to start my sessions with the uh, beginning uh, with overview. So I have done a session on Kubernetes overview. I've also done a session uh, for Kubernetes ecosystem overview. And there are links available here in this uh, uh, session today, as well as I will drop the link in the comment box for your references. So Kubernetes ecosystems, tools, and capabilities, we have already discussed in part one. We also have uh, some good um, sessions on Kubernetes, like Goldilocks Kubernetes, cost management, that will talk about how do you manage cost for Kubernetes. If you're interested to start your journey with uh, machine learning, so Kubeflow and uh, that topic is very interesting for you. It, it, again, we have done a specific session on that. If you can go and check out that. We also have done a session on OPA, shifting policy management left. If you're interested to know more about that, uh, again, I will drop the link in the comment box. I will also recommend some other books uh, if you're interested to know more about Kubernetes. Kubernetes Bible, this is a publication from PACT and it's available on their website for purchase. I also recommend 50 Kubernetes concept every DevOps engineer should know. Again, the publisher is PACT. It's an excellent book to get started with if you're starting your journey on Kubernetes. And as I mentioned, for this session, I'm taking support from Mastering Kubernetes, fourth edition by Pact. I highly recommend that book as well. So let's uh, quickly get started. As I mentioned, I'll not talk about like the basics uh, of Kubernetes and the basics around the Kubernetes ecosystem today. I'm going to talk about some advanced topics, which I have not covered in part one, starting from monitoring Kubernetes clusters. So monitoring Kubernetes clusters. Um, why do we need to monitor Kubernetes clusters? Because it helps with proactive health management of containerized infrastructure. Some of the common matrices used to monitor uh, Kubernetes are Kubernetes cluster matrices, which is primarily like resources of the cluster, such as memory, disk, CPU, to simplify it. Control plane matrices like API server monitoring, data store monitoring, scheduler monitoring, control management, uh, controller manager monitoring. We also look at Kubernetes nodes matrices like capacity of different resources of a node, number of containers, latency of each operations. 
pod matrices like utilization needs, for example, and application matrices, uh, how uh, the application is performing on, or on top of these clusters, right? So again, Kubernetes community has put a lot of effort to provide monitoring for Kubernetes as a foundation for large reliable deployments. To make Kubernetes observable at scale, there are various different components to consider. You must have heard about these terms. Let's uh, demystify these terms for you in today's session. So logging. Logging is logs capture timestamped events, which provides the baseline for troubleshooting, debugging, auditing, compliance, and security. The logs have some key attributes like format, storage, and aggregation. Distributed tracing. If you're starting with observability and you're starting with cloud native architecture, you must have heard about distributed tracing. A distributed trace is a collection of spans and references. With the rise of microservices based architecture, it is important to implement distributed tracing. If you want to know more about distributed tracing, I would uh, recommend you that you research this topic and uh, also. Um, get hold of some observability uh, discussions and sessions which are available online. We probably might do a session on observability as such in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Matrices, it is the measurement of critical aspects of the system over time. Matrices are time series of numerical values, typically floating numbers. So each matrix has a name and set of labels, for example, CPU to utilization over time, just to simplify the concepts. Dashboard and visualization. It might be cumbersome to look at just raw log files, matrices and traces. The dashboard and visualization tools provide capability to combine and provide business insights. And lastly, error reporting and self-healing capabilities with the rise of ML ops, uh, AI ops. I think um, combining error reporting and some capabilities of self-healing, uh, which are deduced to, to enhance the value of monitoring and observability are uh, some advanced trends, which we see even in the Kubernetes community and ecosystem. So uh, if, now we are kind of familiar with the basics. So let's start to kind of dig deeper into, uh, you know, how do we monitor uh, Kubernetes clusters? So obviously there are a lot of tools available today. So there are some popular tools, but let's understand the basics first. Essentially monitoring tools are collecting Kubernetes data from four sources. So the Kubernetes host running the kubelet. So acts as a bridge between the master and the nodes, and it scrapes data from the Kubernetes host. So many of these tools, which are there in the market out of the box, might be collecting data from the Kubernetes host running on the kubelet. Kubelet matrices are matrices for API server, kube scheduler, and kube control manager. Kubelet's built-in C advisor. This is very important. This uh, tool or this utility collects, uh, aggregates, process, and exports matrices for your running containers. Cube state matrices is information at a cluster level, a big picture view of what is happening on your Kubernetes cluster. Cube state matrices hits all Kubernetes services and collects information on their current state, such as how many containers are running, how many are there in a particular state, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, Kubernetes dashboard. It's a web-based UI add-on for Kubernetes clusters tool. This tool offers different views for CPU and memory usage matrices aggregated across all nodes. So these are some basic utilities which help monitoring your Kubernetes clusters. Now let's dig deeper into some open source tools available for monitoring Kubernetes clusters. So we'll start with Prometheus. This project developed first by SoundCloud and afterwards donated to CNCF. This project stores all the data as time series data 
and uh, it has an operator which provides Kubernetes native deployment. If you're interested to know how this operator works, um, you can, I have sticked in the link. Uh, you can go to the GitHub uh, repo and uh, check out some more details and dig into more details around how, how you can contribute to that project. There is another tool, Grafana. Grafana is very popular open source multi-platform tool for Kubernetes monitoring and observability. There's Loki. Loki is an open source project for log aggregation and based on indexing rather than labeling. Again, this is only a high level overview of these tools. If you're interested to know more about these tools, you have the, the GitHub repo for all these tools. You can go ahead and check out and research yourself and also be a contributor to, to those projects, right? So Jagger is also a tool which is popularly used. It was uh, initially developed by Uber and open source in 2016. It was actually inspired by other existing tracing tools like Zipkin and Dapper. If you're not new to these, uh, this uh, cloud native microservices world, you would, uh, you would already know these tools. Users can either use uh, an operator, uh, which is kind of pretty simple to uh, work with, or a daemon set configuration. Again, all this information is available on the repo. If you uh, would like to get started with this operator, you can check out the link which is associated with this tool. KubeWatch, if you have heard about this tool, it watches for specific Kubernetes events and pushes notifications on these events to your various endpoints like Slack or PagerDuty. And uh, again, KubeWatch, if you want to know more about that, uh, there is a link uh, which I have in the slide. AFK stack, which is basically Fluent collects logs from pods running on cluster nodes. Elasticsearch injects these logs from mm, the fluid and stores them in a central location and Kibana is a UI. Lastly, I will refer to Weavescope. It's a zero configuration monitoring tool developed by Weaveworks. Weaveworks has a very good reputation in terms of producing large scale open source tools. And uh, I think this is also one good addition to Kubernetes community. Again, the intention for, from, uh, for this slide was to get you acquainted with some open source tools available in the market for monitoring and see if, if you would like to use any of them or you want to cont contribute to any one of them. Now, one must, uh, be asking like you know we also see a lot of commercial tools in the space right and uh, people are always uh, you know there's a lot of uh, complication and confusion around which tool to use for what reasons so they I have uh, listed four tools here which are primarily used for monitoring so cloud-based monitoring and analytics platform that offers integration with Kubernetes so these tools which I'm going to talk about not only used for monitoring of Kubernetes clusters there's there uh, they are holistic platforms for observability and anal analytics but they can also perform Kubernetes monitoring so starting from Datadog it provides real-time monitoring and alerting for your Kubernetes Kubernetes cluster and offers detailed insight into performance of your application. Datadog also offers a variety of integrations with other tools like Slack, PagerDuty, and Jira. New Relic, um, again, uh, one of the exciting tools, cloud-based monitoring tool that offers Kubernetes integration. It provides real-time monitoring, alerting for your Kubernetes cluster and offers detailed insight into performance of your application. Sysdig, cloud native uh, security and monitoring platform that offers Kubernetes integration with other tools such as Prometheus, Grafana, and Slack. And lastly, Dynatrace, one of my favorite tools in this space, cloud-based monitoring tool that offers Kubernetes integration. If you're curious to check which tool can do what and pros and cons of it, probably I can do a session on that. Uh, I'm planning to do a session on observability anyways. So I will pick that topic there. So do comment on the comment box if you would like to hear 
about more about these tools and how they play around in the observability space. So let's move on. Enough about monitoring. Let's talk about security. So security, I will start again with the basics. So if you are new to Kubernetes security ecosystem, I would uh, refer you to 4C model of cloud native security. This is something which is available on the Kubernetes uh, documentation, open source documentation page, and the reference is in, in the uh, slide itself. What it talks about is, in principle, each layer of cloud native security model builds upon the next outermost layer. So you see in the picture, there is squad, container, cluster, and cloud colo and corporate data center. So each of these layers will have some security, uh, you know, uh, security um, layer, and each of these layers are enhanced by one another. So the code layer benefits from strong base of cloud cluster and container security layers, for example. Again, if you are interested to read more about this, uh, go to the link. Now, Kubernetes security is a set of best practices, techniques, and technologies designed to secure the Kubernetes platform and containers and uh, how we orchestrate that. So there are certain organizations which has come up with a very good, uh, you know, uh, detailed assessment of the security best practices. Some of them I have referred here. So Kubernetes attack metrics, which I will talk about in the later slide. OWASP best practices also talks about Kubernetes security best practices. So if you're interested to know what they are talking about, you can also uh, go and check out their you know, perspective ar around it. My three recommendation is uh, another area where um, you can also check what their framework is and how they are looking forward for building uh, more secure, you know, cloud native applications and what is their recommendation. CIS Kubernetes benchmark is another area and checkpoint best practices is another area to look at. So these uh, frameworks, tools, and technology are helpful for you to kind of dig deeper into uh, Kubernetes security. I will talk about a few of them here. So let's uh, talk about my three attack framework. This is uh, a knowledge base of techniques and tools. Uh, I wouldn't say tools, it's techniques and tactics by attackers, which they use to infiltrate and attack Kubernetes clusters. An attacker usually strategize how to infiltrate a cl cluster and perform damage by following the stages that entails an attack life cycle. So there are threat vectors like initial access, execution, persistence, privilege, escalations, defense, invasion, credential access, discovery, lateral movement, uh, collection, and impact. So if uh, you want to know more about this, uh, these are the links and the sources we works. Um, there is another um, Red Matrix for Kubernetes, which was uh, developed by Azure Security Center. They specifically talk about Kubernetes attack metrics and attack light metrics comprising the major techniques that are relevant to container orchestration security with focus on Kubernetes. While Mitre attack framework is a holistic framework for threat management, uh, this specifically talks about uh, Kubernetes um, threat metrics and to a certain extent also refers to Azure uh, uh, baselining, right? So let's um, dig deeper into more details. Again, an overview of securing Kubernetes. There is like the framework, there is also some um, specific, uh, you know, techniques when it comes to Kubernetes security posture. But primarily uh, what it means is these things, the human element of Kubernetes security, 
which is while technical solutions are important part of Kubernetes security, enterprises must consider the human element. So how do you train your staff? How do you coach up skill as well as how do you uh, build um, a, a, an ecosystem of human plus tools to secure your uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters. I'll talk more about it uh, in the upcoming slides, Kubernetes and container configuration management being one of the other areas using, you know, Kubernetes secret management instead of plain text configurations for authentication, use tokens or SSH keys and other privileged uh, information uh, as example to make uh, your security posture uh, better. Then Kubernetes network security is also important. Encrypting data in transit should be tables, uh, table stakes for most production workloads. And additionally, network policies should be fine-tuned. Kubernetes storage, also important area, just as encryption of data in transit is a must. Encryption of data at rest is an important aspect of Kubernetes security. Patch management, invariably new security issues and vulnerability arises, whether they are related to your underlying infrastructure, the Kubernetes platform directly, containers, images, or dependencies in your code. You need to patch, uh, um, you need to have a patch management plan and preferably uh, an automated patch management plan to mitigate the, these risks. Compliance regulations like uh, PCI DSS says, HIPAA and SOX compliance all come with specific requirements that are that could directly impact the decisions around Kubernetes security. These um, recommendations are primarily checkpoints recommendations, and I thought that it would be really good to highlight this because it's it uh, in a very simple language it uh, provides you a more holistic approach towards security of Kubernetes clusters. Now let's talk about tools. So some popular open source tools, for example, if you would like to contribute to the open source tools, these are good options. So starting from KubeBench, KubeBench is a tool that checks whether Kubernetes is deployed securely by running the checks documented in CIS, Kubernetes Benchmark. We have talked about it in the earlier slide. Reference uh, is there. Uh, for the Git uh, re Hub repo, if you want to know more about it or you want to contribute to KubeBench. KubeHunter, KubeHunter hunts for security weaknesses in Kubernetes clusters. The tool was developed to increase awareness and visibility for security issues in Kubernetes environment. Again, I've sticked in the reference uh, GitHub repo if you're interested to know more. Cube Audit is another tool. It's a command line tool and a Go package to audit Kubernetes clusters for various different security concerns. KubeSec.io is an open source security analysis tool that scans and then assigns score to your Kubernetes resource. Interesting uh, tool and interesting results uh, when you implement this tool. Kubescape is another open source Kubernetes security platform for your IDE, CI/CD pipeline, and clusters. So some interesting open source tools to contribute to and to get knowledge about. Now we will talk about some popular multi-vendor tools as we spoke about log and monitoring and observability. There are certain tools which are one multi-vendor, they are commercial tools. So new vector, starting from that tool, it's a security suite compatible with both Kubernetes and OpenShift cluster. And New Vector offers plugins to integrate with clusters created on the major cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and even IBM and Alibaba. Reference um, to this uh, tool as well as know more about it, uh, it, was, um, over, it was acquired by SUSE uh, in the past, so you can check out how it uh, is integrated into their portfolio as well. Prisma Cloud. Prisma Cloud is a cloud security platform that can be used to secure Kubernetes clusters. It provides runtime defense, vulnerability management, and compliance reporting. Equasec is another good tool. It provides container security platform that can be used to secure Kubernetes clusters. 
as other tools. It provides runtime protection, vulnerability scanning, and compliance auditing. Sneak, uh, it is a developer security platform tool for securing custom code, open source dependencies, containers, and cloud infrastructure all from a single platform. And then uh, our traditional tools like JFrog X-Ray, which is an artifact analysis tool, and it can also provide a continuous picture of all artifacts as well as dependencies at one place. So uh, we have enough talked about security, and I think it gives you an overview of how to find information as well as uh, take your next step to improve your security posture for Kubernetes cluster, let's talk about governance and policies. So Kubernetes ecosystem is large, complex, it's growing. Governance policies are important to meet both external and internal standards. There are two governance dimensions. So why do we talk about governance? The first is policy scope, meaning where a specific rule should be applied, enforced, or verified. Security policies like covering configuration constraints and policies, network policy management, image management is another governance area, and access permission and policies. Secondly, policy targets relating to what should be enforced and verified, implementing your governance framework, combining it with multiple specialized governance framework into a comprehensive solution. So again, CNCF has provided extensive guidelines on governance and policies and these specific, you know, specifics. So if you're interested to know more about all this, uh, you can go to the CNCF documentation and find some relevant information. When we talk about governance, it refers to an organization's ability to enforce and validate uh, rules to guarantee compliance with corporate standards. So I'll talk about some of these uh, things, which uh, I mean, uh, how uh, cloud providers are implementing this and what kind of tools are uh, you know, more popular in this context. So if you talk about AWS, customers usually use Kaivarno and Gatekeeper or uh, other third-party tools uh, to define and implement a governance strategy for Amazon EKS cluster. Again, uh, there is more information in the GitHub repo if you are interested to uh, find out and research more about it. Azure, on the other hand, also uses uh, Kaivarno and uh, Gatekeeper, and it also can use the Azure policy for Kubernetes add-on to extend Gatekeeper for AKS governance strategy. So Gatekeeper, again, is an important tool. It, has, it is being referenced and used um, at many places. Gatekeeper is a Kubernetes admin admission controller that enforces policies created with OPA, Open Policy Agent. And as I referred in the beginning, we have done a session in, on OPA. So if you're interested to know more about how OPA or Open Policy Agent works, that is a great starting point. Uh, Kaiborno is a Kubernetes native policy engine that validates, mutates, and generates Kubernetes resources and config resource configurations with policies. So uh, I think it gives you a good perspective on governance and policy management for Kubernetes. Let's move on to plugins, APIs, and extensions. So Kubernetes is a flexible platform and it's widely popular uh, and exponential adoption has resulted in extension of a lot of these capabilities, out of the box uh, integration and easy to use, uh, you know, plugins and integrations which can happen. Um, the, the extension points for Kubernetes can be user-defined types, API access extensions, infrastructure extensions, operators, scheduler extensions. For example, uh, kubectl plugins, interested to explore possibilities there, check out uh, the package and the, the references on the left-hand side of the slide. So again, pretty much you can develop a webhook or a binary plugin or some kind of a controller um, extension um, and also try to kind of uh, uh, make uh, your own customized or user defined, uh, you know, uh, adoption possible through these extensions, plugins and APIs. There's a lot of possibilities with uh, those things. 
Other area which I will cover in this uh, session today is key advanced trends with Kubernetes. And I will talk about growing importance of CNCF and CDF and ensuring growth of open source ecosystem in a pragmatic way. So Kubernetes is one of the biggest success stories of open source um, tools and components when it comes to cloud native technologies. And uh, CNCF and CDF both are playing an instrumental role, getting that ecosystem evolved through multiple projects uh, hosted on uh, these foundations. So Kubernetes ecosystem, as we speak, is evolving and it is not untouched with the AI and AI ops movement. So I will talk about uh, a couple of more tools which are kind of very interesting and evolving the Kubernetes ecosystem as we speak. So K K8S GPT is a tool for scanning your Kubernetes uh, clusters, diagnosing and diagnosing and triaging issues in simple English language. Um, it is a very interesting tool, adoption of open AI and chat GPT in the context of Kubernetes. Uh, it's very interesting to kind of look at what they are doing. Um, KubeCuttle Open AI plugin. This is another project uh, where they generate and apply Kubernetes manifest using open AI GPT, chat G, uh, open AI GPT uh, components. And then AI-assisted Kubernetes, it can also be used for auto scaling, load balancing, predictive maintenance and optimization. So do check out that. And Kubeflow, lastly, the machine learning toolkit for Kubernetes. We have done a session on Kubeflow and we have uh, invited Kubeflow community into uh, the community of practice of DevOps here. So if you're interested to contribute uh, to that toolkit, that is where you have to get started with. So I will also talk about key trends of managed Kubernetes platforms, which are also part of the advanced key trends, which we see as we speak uh, about Kubernetes ecosystem evolution. So Kubernetes on the edge. Example, Cube Edge, Rancher, K3S, uh, Kubernetes on Raspberry Pi, if you have not uh, experimented with the, these, uh, you know, Kubernetes deployments on the edge, that would be one of the interesting areas to watch out for. Kubernetes platform as a service, there are emergence of several enterprise grade Kubernetes as a service platform, even um, enterprises and organizations are making their own segue into Kubernetes as a service platform. Uh, some of the key uh, platforms which we have not talked about, like we have already talked about the CSPs and Azure's and the AWS and Google's of the world, but we'll talk about DigitalOcean Kubernetes, which is targeting small to medium businesses and individual users. So that's an, one interesting, you know, uh, hmm service and a platform then con oracle container engine for kubernetes oke it is another managed kubernetes service but unlike the competition oke is free and does not charge you for cluster management openshift is a highly flexible and customizable managed kubernetes service that is hoping to drive a multi-cloud trend so these are some of the key, um, you know, platforms which are kind of, you know, um, evolving and introducing many more features as we speak. So we, with this, we are coming to end of today's session, but I would leave you with a question adopting Kubernetes governance strategy. Think about the leader's role adopting Kubernetes governance and long-term thinking to sustain the results. So would you like to have your own customized uh, plugins for Kubernetes? Would you like to explore more on Kubernetes as a service platform? Or you are interested to have some more integrations with Kubernetes and AI ops in that dimension? Start thinking about the roadmap for yourself when you are using Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, in your uh, cloud native applications and start to think about uh, how do you take the next steps. With that, I would like to sign off for today. Again, I would uh, suggest if you're interested in Kubernetes, there are four books which I've uh, referred here in, in during my sessions and my previous sessions. 
So if you're interested, uh, you can get hold of these books. The publisher is backed. My recent um, read is Mastering Kubernetes, fourth edition, which is a very, very interesting book, highly recommended. For the next session, we will explore machine learning capabilities as a service. Uh, so stay tuned for our next session. For now, thank you very much. I sign off for today.